Yo, what's going on, Flyers fans? Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Travis Ballinghoff, here today. And we got some big news in the Flyers world today. They acquired right-handed defenseman Tony D'Angelo, the hometown kid from the Carolina Hurricanes. I have a lot of different thoughts on this. Um, I wanted to make a video about it. Um, I want to hear your guys' thoughts as well in the comments. Uh, so let's get right into it. So let's start off with the acquisition cost. So they gave up a second rounder two years from now. They gave up a third rounder in next year's draft, and they gave up a fourth rounder in today's draft. On top of that, they just gave them a two-year extension uh, worth $5 million AAV per season. Both of those are nothing for a top-four defenseman. That's a cheap contract, and that's not a lot of assets to give up in a trade uh, for a top-four defenseman, but we will get into that later. Um, but, I mean, look at what we gave up for Rasmus versus the line, and that is way more than what we just gave up for Anthony D'Angelo. Tony's a much better player than Risto. Um, but let's talk about the off-ice issues. Um, it's really no secret that he has a racist path, past. Excuse me. Um, if you don't know that, um, I don't want to get into it too much, but you can Google it and you'll find everything about it. Um, he does have a racist path, past. Excuse me. Um, but from what it sounds like, things went well in Carolina. Um, I will touch on it a little bit. For those who don't know, he signed a big contract with the New York Rangers a couple years ago. And it sounds like there were some incidents in the locker room. Some of that being racism towards teammates. Um, sounds like he got in a fight with Alex Georgiev. Um, and the team wasn't a big fan of... Uh, he used to argue with fans, both Rangers fans and NHL fans, um, about politics, his political takes, all that kind of stuff. Um, it sounds like a lot of that was true. Um, maybe not all of it. Um, a lot of former teammates stuck up for Tony over the past couple of years and when he was bought out. Kevin Hayes had a lot of good things to say about him today. Um, Jordan, Jordan Martinuk had a lot of good things to say about him on spitting chiclets, uh, Keandre Miller, who there were reports, or I should say rumors, not reports. I should say rumors. Um, there were rumors about them two going back and forth, Tony making racist remarks. Uh, there was a rumor that he stole Keandre Miller's first goal, uh, puck. Um, Keandre Miller denied all that, said they were very good friends, so it's tough to say what actually happened there. It does seem confirmed that him and Georgiev got in a fist fight, um, and we're not sure what caused that. Um, but I'm willing to give him a shot because of it sounded like things went well in Carolina. Um, I'm willing to give second chances. Carolina gave him a second chance, and it worked. So why why not uh, give the guy another chance? Um, but let's talk about the on-ice uh, product. I think that's kind of the most important thing here. So going back to his Ranger days, um, I couldn't stand him. He was one of my least favorite players in the league. Um, whether he was whining, crying, flopping, throwing temper tantrums, um, I couldn't stand the guy. Um, he still does that. Um, and it's also very easy for the opponent to get him off his game. Uh, you can you can get in Tony's head. You can get him off his game. We saw that in juniors. We saw that in New York. Uh, we saw that in Carolina just this past playoff. Um, that is going to be an issue because he hasn't been uh, he hasn't been able to get rid of that out of his game. Um, but he is a good puck moving defenseman. Um, Chuck said today that's why they acquired him. He, Chuck said that was our biggest weakness. Um, I kind of want to touch on that because we got rid of our best puck moving defenseman, Shane Gostaspear last off season for nothing. We actually added assets to get rid of ghost. And now we had to acquire, um, another puck moving defenseman, give up assets to get them. Um, it's poor asset management. I know I just talked about, we didn't give up much to get them in terms of draft capital for a top four defenseman. But it, it's still poor asset management when it comes down to it. Not to mention, um, so I know someone who was kind of, he had, he had a little tip on the in, uh, information when Tony was bought out in New York. 
He said Chuck called Tony, um, but an offer was never made. I mean, if you had interest in him, you could have offered him a deal. You could have got him for dirt cheap. Now we just signed him, gave up assets for him. It's poor asset management by Chuck, even though, like I mentioned, we didn't give up a ton for him. We could have made this a lot easier on ourselves if we did it a year prior. Um, but back, I kind of went off on a tangent there. Back on the on-ice product, he is a good player. I think he and Provy will be a good pair together. Um, kind of like what Chuck said, he's going to help get the puck out of his D zone easier. He's got a very good breakout pass pass. Um, he's very good in the offensive zone. Um, who knows what this all means for Ryan Ellis. I've heard a lot of different things. I've heard he's supposed to come back into Philly the next couple of weeks and he's going to try skating. Um, I'm sure some of you who are watching and listening to me now. Um, also tune in to snow, the goalie, um, and San Filippo, one of the co-hosts over there, writer for crossing broad. He makes it sound like Ryan Ellis will not be ready for the regular, uh, the start of the regular season. He may not be ready for a long time. If ever, there's a chance he misses the whole year. There's a chance his career's in doubt. Um, so when you look at it from a cat perspective, if Ryan Ellis starts the year, on LTIR, this is how you can afford Tony. Um, Ryan Ellis's six mil will go on LTIR, and Tony's five slides right in. Um, so from that perspective, it's okay. Obviously, you want Ryan Ellis healthy and on this team. Because, um, I mean, I don't think Tony and Sandheim could work as a pair. But if your top D pair is Provy, D'Angelo and your second D pair is Sanheim uh, Ellis. I mean, maybe that's even your first pair. And then your third pair is maybe York Ristolainen. That's not a bad defense core. Uh, obviously, Ristolainen's overpaid. We all know that uh, Chuck gave up a lot to get him. He didn't trade him at the deadline. I mean, we know Risto's overpaid, but that that's a good top six if everybody's healthy. But who, yeah, like I said, who knows what happens with Ryan Ellis. Um, going back to Tony, I said he's a good player. He's a good player with flaws. Um, he's a very similar player to Shane Gosses. He's got a great uh, breakout pass. He's very good power play quarterback. He's good in the offensive zone. He's not good around his own net in the defensive zone. Not good in the corners and winning puck battles, and he's not good along the walls. Um, so he is a flawed player. Um, he might help the power play. I say might because he's a good power play quarterback. But the power play has a lot of issues, whether that's zone entries, um, whether that's we really haven't had a, a bumper threat since Braden Chen was traded five years ago. Um, we just lost the captain, Claude Giroux. Um, there's a lot of holes on this power play. The power play quarterback the past couple of years has been an issue. But even when we had a good power play quarterback in Ghost um, going back to 2018, 19, 20, I mean, the power play still struggled them years. Um, so I say Tony might help, um, but he won't He won't fix the power play is what I'm trying to say. He might help it. He won't fix it. Um, I'm also curious about how the whole Tortorella and Tony relationship goes down. Um, I would imagine Chuck called Tortorella today and said, yo, um, we're close to acquiring Anthony D'Angelo. Are you on board with that? And I would imagine Tortorella signed off on it or he wouldn't be here. Um, but kind of like I mentioned earlier, he whines and cries on the ice. He throws temper tantrums. I can't imagine Tortorella is going to put up with that. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but overall. Tony's a solid player. He has flaws, but he's a solid player. You didn't give up much to get him. There are risks, but I think he'll be fine as long as, one, the racism is gone, right? We didn't hear any of it out of Carolina. As long as the racism has gone and he gets along with Tortorella, I think he'll be fine. Um, this has been a very crazy topic on social media today, as I'm sure some of you know. 
Uh, I hope some of you leave your thoughts and comments down in the comment section below. I'm curious what you guys are thinking. Um, but if you're still here, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It helps me and the channel grow. Um, for those who tuned into the live stream last night, it was a ton of fun. We had a lot of fun in there. Uh, did well, got a lot of views. Uh, if you were watching that, I appreciate it. Uh, that's all I got for you. Peace out.